all present and accounted for. Good. As you will have heard, the Ark is ready. All that remains is to board and be on your way. Oh, I've seen my fair share of tight schedules, but this was bloody murder. But we did it. We finished the ship. It's safe, fit for purpose, and looks good to boot. Aye, it's a garland through and through. I really don't know what we'd do without you. Thank you. For everything. Ah, oh, don't mention it. Ever since that episode with Omega, I've been toying with the idea of star-faring vessels. And as they say, necessity is the mother of invention. We've learned a lot, let me tell you. In case you're wondering about payment, the ongoing existence of the world ought to do. But feel free to throw in a colorful recounting of your journey on your return. So, have you thought of a name? A name? Wasn't everyone just calling it Father's teeny tiny toy boat? Well, seeing as its purpose has changed, I thought a more eloquent name was in order. I suggested as much to Fortuno, who seemed quite amenable to the idea. As you know, this vessel is the culmination of heretofore unprecedented collaboration. And though said collaboration is owed to the Scions, there is another whose noble deeds made our work possible. From a fragment of Dalamud, we obtained not only advanced materials such as refined adamantite, but the knowledge to traverse the stars. And this fragment would not have found its way to us had the Archon Luiswa not fought to protect this world, and in so doing, laid down his life. Now that the vessel stands complete, I cannot help but wonder if it was more than mere happenstance. If it was my father's intention to guide us here. In the hopes that his guidance will see you all safely home, I name the vessel after that self-same fragment of Dalamud he delivered unto us. The Starship Ragnarok. Sorry for the wait. I got everyone you asked for, and not a one less. What are you all doing here? Oh, I invited them. The representatives of those tribes with religious inclinations. You've done a fine job of readying the Ragnarok, but for it to take flight, we'll of course need the power of the Mother Crystal. Given its immense size, however, transporting it would be an absolute logistical nightmare, not to mention we'd need to shatter it into tiny shards for feeding to the engines. But a brilliant idea came to me. We convert the crystal's energy into forms that can transport themselves! Thou wouldst employ summoning, or should I say, its precursor, creation magics. Care to explain for our benefit? 
As you may have witnessed at Bestway's Barrow, the Lotharids are capable of creation magics, which they use to shape the moon's environment. Yet simple though they make it seem, it is a highly advanced and exacting art. To perform it correctly requireth that the wielder holdeth the object in his mind's eye in clearest detail. Hence the ancient meticulous management of concepts. Drawing upon this art, the Asians conceived of summoning as we know it. A derivative that replaceth the complexity of concepts with the simplicity of zealotry to make manifest a creation. I see. By combining the Lotharit's magics and the tribe's faith, we convert the Mother Crystal into primals of purer form and greater obedience. Summoning as it was intended, one might say. Indeed! Indeed! While Hydaelyn gave us the ability to use creation magics, she forbade us from using it to make anything possessed of a soul, or similar. She didn't say anything about fulfilling the desires of others, though. So, borrowing our friend's faith, we'll create deities using the Mother Crystal's power and send them to the Ragnarok! Am I the only one here concerned about the risk of being turned into a tempered minion? Oh, right, I was getting to that. From what I read in Charlian Tomes, it appears the Asians incorporated an additional nasty element into their summoning method. The fervent desire to assimilate others into one's belief. Beings thus created are instilled with the self-same desire and use their powers to enthrall people, starting with the summoner. In contrast, our creation magics, the original and the best, except no substitute, don't incorporate any of that rubbish, so there's no risk of tempering. I mean, if the being was on the scale of Zodiac, you might feel a little tug, but I think we'll be safe enough. Truth be told, I do not understand the intricacies of this plan, but none of us would ever turn our backs on you. When the avatars of our faith ran amok, you intervened without decrying we who birthed them. Where others vilified and suppressed us, you offered understanding and friendship. In gratitude, we will share with you the true expressions of our gods, not malevolent deities, but benevolent saviors. All right, you lot, we're heading to the ethereal sea. Stay in sight, else you're liable to get lost. Lead the way. May we have a moment? In anticipation of the day man might journey to the stars, we developed these. Portable teleportation devices, one for each of you designed to work in tandem. Press the button on one, and in a matter of moments, all eight will activate and send their owners back to the Ragnarok. There is no telling what hazards you may encounter. If you find yourself separated or lost, please do not hesitate to use them. Be safe, all of you, and come back. You as well. I pray you take care. Looks like everything is in order. So I'll go ahead and board. A few of my fellows will remain to assist with the summonings, but rest assured, the vessel won't want for competent crewing.
If you are ready, then you should board as well. Go, and Godspeed. I hope you have everything, because I can't be bothered turning back. Right then, make yourselves comfortable. We're setting off in just a moment. Incredible. This is Portiono. Can you hear me? The preparations for the summonings are complete. In accordance with the 14th phase of the plan, we have moved the Ragnarok to the launch site. The gates are open. You may depart when ready. So, are we ready? As ready as we'll ever be. Let's get going. Oh, come on. A burnt out star's got more fire in its belly. Try it again, with feeling. Me? But I... No need to be coy, brother. Do it, and do it well. If you all insist. <clears throat> Onward, unto the distant stars, and beyond! Ragnarok, engage! Uh, engage! Engage!
walkers into the sky, I cannot imagine a greater indignity. <laughs> Do not sulk so, for thy mighty winds exist not only to buffet and batter. Nay, they may serve also to thrust forth with vigor. Such is thy glory, and thus it is an occasion to rejoice. So come, let us revel! to them a storm that they may pierce the firmament and fly free! Even. Thanks to the power of those primals, the engines are roaring and we're ripping along. All values are also within protected ranges. Time to destination is eight carats. Perhaps seven at a pinch. as you know, is Ultima Fool. Lest you wonder, the place is not a star so much as a patch of emptiness. That's the extent of what our equipment could determine, anyway. From what we know of Meteon, she's likely used Dynamis to obfuscate her location. So, in conclusion, we'll only know what's there when we get there. See to it the ship's ready to take off at a moment's notice. We'll support the search as best we can, but it'll be your paws on the ground, assuming there is any. But everything will be fine, I'm sure. Heidelin believes in you, so you ought to believe in yourselves. Just don't do anything I wouldn't, like waiting too long to use those portable teleporters of yours. Personally, at the slightest sign of trouble, I'd mash the button to bits, and you should as well. Understood. We promise to be careful. I suggest you brace yourselves. We're about to arrive, and the vessel will shake a good bit. <laughs> What is this? Something is... Oh, interfering with the equipment!
Greetings. Greetings. Can you hear me? So this is Meteon. Oh. Have you met one of my sisters? I don't remember meeting you myself. But I do know that you're from Atheris. Why have you come? All you had to do was wait. I would have delivered to you your ends. We didn't ask for that. I don't understand. All life is destined to end. Why choose to prolong your suffering? Effort, ambition, love. They amount to naught. Happiness, should you find it, is inevitably lost. Stolen away by events beyond your control. There is no logic nor meaning in it. You think there is. Convince yourselves. But it's all a cruel accident. Come now. I speak the truth. A truth you would recognize if you looked up at the night sky. Unbroken emptiness. Cold, dark, and silent. Your world, like every other, is but a blemish upon its perfect fabric. Life is an anomaly. It is unnatural and cannot continue. The sooner you accept this, the easier it will be. Just to be clear, we're not here to argue with you. We know that life is fleeting, and that in the short time we have it, we're not assured happiness. Indeed. I've seen far more sorrow in the eyes of many I've met. I myself have plenty of regrets. And one day they'll die with me. Gone to dust with my good deeds and unfulfilled dreams. But we accept this. That our existence may seem pointless. That sorrow, rage and despair will always dog our heels. And we press on regardless. That is why Hydlin guided us here. In her boundless love for mankind, she has prepared us for this trial, and in her name, we have come for you. Yes, I sense it. A burning passion like unto fury. I know it well. For the same passion once burned in many a star before yours. Suffocated and extinguished now. You approach the bounds of my ultimate. 
where emotions dictate to reality, where resignation and acceptance unite to embrace the end. Where those who yet valiantly cling to life cannot thrive. Tancred? Meteon is gone as well. Mayhap he awakened first and gave chase. Uh, everyone? It appears we are at our destination. This... this is Ultima Thule. Not that we knew what to expect, but I wasn't expecting this. From atmospheric composition to ambient temperatures, all readings are within permissible range. This place is capable of supporting life. If that's the case, then Thancred may well have gone on ahead. Let's go and have a look. to perform a full inspection of the ship as well as a biological scan. So it was that the brave wayfarers arrived at last at Dream's End. In following their path walked, and history written, I am made keenly aware of one truth. Though the curtains may fall again and again, so long as others take the stage, ever shall there be more tales to tell. So, let them bring it to a close, I say. Let the curtains fall upon this, the final chapter in the tale of the star. I, is this a dead star? As I live and breathe, I live and breathe. Well, the environment itself shouldn't kill us. Well then, let us search for Thancred while exploring the area. The ship we leave in your care 